Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calderness. This episode, we're talking about a brand new design article that was locked off to us non-members of the Inner Circle hours after it was released. We're going to be talking about some Malcolm questions, some Community Tuesdays questions, and like always, what made us happy this week? This is episode 334. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. <laughs> Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, uh, like always, is the the billion dollar Bruce, my co-host. What is what's going on, Bruce? Oh, you forgot part of my title: the reigning Dial H for oh, Hero Clicks heavyweight champion. Dude of this podcast and heavy rates heavy weights the right word after uh all that binge eating you forced me to do Jeez. you know i realized quickly after those challenges that i am a very slow eater i mean i i mean i knew this throughout life i am not a fast eater i don't know why i chose so many food-based challenges but uh i don't really regret it because it was it was pretty good watching you uh watching you have to do all that um, the only bad part was that I also had to do all of that, and it just, I did not, mm, it did not sit well with me. Yeah. Good we're, thing we're definitely going to have no, to change no something. good challenge, like, finish this T-bone steak in, you know, five minutes, <laughs> or, like... Were you going to buy the T-bone steak, Simeon? You know, Were you going to offer to buy the T-bone steak? That's what I thought. No, 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 no. Like, no, 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 the no, budget no. was the ice cream and poor gingerbread house kit, and... <laughs> and <laughs> Luckily, the cheapest that, beer that gingerbread and, yeah, house that was the not budget. Blow the budget, but yeah. No, it did not. Thank goodness. If people could guess the most expensive thing in that video besides the Hero Clicks figures, uh, I'd be very impressed. What they think we spent the most, <laughs> the most of the budget on. Um, let us know, guys. If yes. and if you don't know what we we're talking about, we we're talking about the. Hero Clicks X WWE Extreme Rules that we posted on our YouTube channel. Uh, check it out. We have links to it on our Facebook and Twitter. I'll put a link in the bottom of this video. We had a trailer come out a week ago, and that was yeah. our Hero Clicks Extreme Rules coming soon trailer. We had three it promos is all that came out subsequent. Three beautiful promos. So make sure you watch it all in order. Um, trailer, three promos, and then the main video. Yep. Otherwise, for your easy uh, viewing, it's gonna make a little. It's gonna make no sense, but yeah, for your viewing pleasure, there is a playlist on our YouTube channel. uh, That is the WWE Hero Flix Extreme Rules playlist. If you click on it, it'll just have them all in order. Once you click on that playlist, so absolutely use that. Check it out, guys. We did a ton of work for this video. A ton of acting skills must i say i mean some emmys should definitely have been earned i mean <laughs> for all movies that came out this year we are in we're in the we're, in, we're contenders i think i was gonna say supporting for cast, all the movies i saw in theater this year something i mean absolutely. i didn't see this one in theater but had i this would have been in the top five of all the movies i saw in theater theater room not yeah, not yeah. theater but theater room like rec- recliner chair and slightly bigger tv <laughs> That's where this bad boy was being released. So check it out. It's on YouTube. Uh, it's it's kind of like an average Hero Clicks game length. Like it's an hour and ten minutes. The overall video. Uh, and then with all the challenges, it's great. So it's just really fun. We had a ton of fun filming it. If you like uh, Hero Clicks, you like wrestling. Well, obviously, you like Hero Clicks. That's a bit redundant, isn't it? Like you'd be listening to this podcast. Like you know what? I hate Hero Clicks, Calder. Then you turn this podcast off. No, no, no. Please don't. Please don't. Please, please keep listening. Anyways. Um, if you like wrestling, and even if you don't, if you just want to, if you enjoy us somewhat as hosts and want to see us uh, really or put us you, to the physical test here. If you really don't like us as people, <laughs> and you just want to see us go through a bit of punishment. Uh, <laughs> on, that, on that end, I guess, too, yeah. There were a few bruises to be if had. You like, and uh, also, uh, I'm going to plug our Patreon, where... It's the only place where you'll be able to see the bloopers from this. So if you watch oh, yeah. the video and you're like, there's no way they did it in one take. Turns out we kind of did. Um, we actually didn't mess up that much. But 
we do have a few bloopers, and those will be going uh, up on our patron-only video feud yep. thing. Mm-hmm. As well as the future uh, bikini match, bra and panty match, WWE oh, uh, style <laughs> attitude era diva match that we're going to be uh, going up there later. That's on our Patreon slash OnlyFans if you guys want that. Link in the description below. Uh, that's a joke. Let's move on. Uh, let's go ahead. But, yep, congratulations. Before we move on totally, congratulations, Simeon, on winning. Uh, never once have I had to handcraft something only to give it away. So my beautiful handcrafted <laughs> belt I made. I mean, I, I got to hold on to it for a few months. I made it a while ago in preparation for the video. And then I was like, yeah, well, I mean, he won. That's how belts work. So, yeah, And it's, it's my, really cool. because trophy got to, shelf right now. Nice. Right next to my nice. PAX Unplugged and it, and, badge and all my Colossals. Uh, well, right on. And I did see that shelf. Some expert, if you guys want to know some expert organizational skills, definitely check out <laughs> Simeon's shelf right there. It's it's breathtaking, I must say. It's all so right. Uh, normally, we start the show with what made us happy. So what made you happy this last week, my man? Well, other than becoming... The Dial H for Heroclix heavyweight champion of the podcast. Of course, that made me happy. But uh, no, it actually uh, really made me happy hanging out with you and Devin all week. Um, or weekend, I should say. That was pretty fun. Uh, had a lot of laughs. Just an unbelievable amount of laughs. I'm not sure what hurt my ribs more. The laughing or the boot that Calder hit me with. But one of them for sure gave me a blu- a bruise and uh, some abdominal pain. So, what can I say, man? What can I say? I wasn't I wasn't holding back. Um, that was awesome. Uh, what made me happy this week besides uh, the wrestling video? And it was also great watching it in the live chat. That was that was awesome. That was fun. So thank you to everybody that tuned in on the live premiere of the video. Um, I uh, went to a Halloween party a week early the other day uh, was Casey Jones. So that was pretty fun. Dressed up, ate some really bad food, uh, played some Jackbox games. I brought my brand new uh, Evil Dead 2 board game. Uh, I painted up not all of the miniatures, but I painted up the boss miniatures and all the character miniatures. And uh, I brought that in and we played a round of that. And this is a crazy fun board game. I will have to plug jasco games here a little bit there was a huge screw up with the original kickstarter for the evil dead 2 board game by space goat and i actually didn't even know they made this one until like a month ago i got like a facebook ad for it and you know it's obviously sketchy because it's a facebook ad um but no it was like legit and they're a good company and they even uh followed through on some promises the last publisher made when they took the Kickstarter down and then didn't give anyone their money back, which was crazy. So Jasco games, evil dead Two. If you like, if you like evil dead, I highly strongly recommend this and the, uh, the, whatever the expansion pack just for free shipping at the very least on their website. It's an $80 game for evil dead Two. The expansion is 35 bucks. It's kind of a lot to drop right away, but if you're an evil dead fan and I'm like a diehard evil dead fan, uh, it's a hundred percent worth it. And it's a super fun game. So had a ton of fun at the party and playing that. So that was uh, that's what made me happy this week. I don't know if it's possible to not be an Evil Dead fan, to be honest. Even if you're like, ooh, I don't like scary stuff. Like, Army of Darkness is not at all scary. And it's incredibly entertaining. Oh, yeah. I mean, maybe... Like, if I ever wanted to show this to, like, some people that might be, you know, a little... Some scaredy cats, I could be like, look, we can skip... People are diehard Evil Dead 1 fans... I can skip all that because that's like some generic horror movie stuff. It's campy and that's what makes it fun and cool. But like Army of Darkness, you can watch that. It's just like kind of a cheesy action movie that just happens to have scary looking villains is about it. Not, it's not a horror movie at all. So yeah. like Army of Darkness, I could watch that movie forever. You know, it's like I, I would show that to people all the time. You know, your your most uptight people could probably see see some fun out of army darkness at the very least and then obviously evil dead 2 goes kind of between the horror and funny wackiness of it all so yeah, yeah. So i think I there's something like for everybody the in the show clockwork orange thing to my nephew pride his eyelids open and forced him to watch it but other than Jeez. that most people voluntarily Jeez. 
watch it. So, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's absolutely it's solid. And this this game is crazy fun. You can potentially be possessed to be a deadite, and you have to switch turns. Like it's it's a really fun game. I actually want to like next time I go down to Omaha, I want to play this for you and Devin because it's like it is a crazy fun game. It's awesome. Nice. But it did make me grateful that Heroclix miniatures are painted because having to paint all these minis and not being like an expert painter, like I can like cover the parts in paint that should be that color of paint and then dry brush and then black wash. Like I can do the basic things. It's not pretty, but I can do it. Um, made me just really respect the fact that we don't have to paint any of these these freaking superhero miniatures that we get because if we did, I, I would not play this game For pretty sure. much. Like I've if gotten... I had, it's I've gotten like several board games that have unpainted figures that are still unpainted. There's a zombie one where you've got like several survivors that have to cross a fairly short board, but it yeah, it ends up it's like a fairly fast paced game, so um but there's a lot of like zombies that can get on the board depending on what cards people get and how people play and whatever. Mm-hmm. And I like a year later, because I got that at Gen Con last year. It's been over a year now, and I still have not painted any of the figures from that. Yikes. Which, to be Yikes. fair, there's like 50 zombies, so that would be a, a full See, week would, of painting. I think you should just do like a super generic. You should buy like some of that miniature grass. You know what I mean? It's like this green dust that like looks like grass. When you like put paint, like wet paint on a base, you like dip it in there. You just do like grass on the bottom spray paint them all gray or something and then like dry brush them with like a greenish kind of tan or a light or a lighter gray like do a yeah or green and then just be like all right there's zombies you know like if it's generic zombies the base i'm probably gonna do something like that with all the generic deadites so i was thinking okay like primer them maybe not even primer them but like put on like a base coat of like green and then splash on like have like five different colors for like hair and clothes and just like try and mix match the hair and clothes a few times so they don't look like the same exact person and then i just like i'll just like flick some red paint at them and then oh nice be good but yeah as as far as uh in-person play goes i have yet to have a party where i can actually bust this game out so it's not really on my like docket of things that need to be done oh i feel you i feel you yeah the only reason i painted these was like i really wanted to for the first game i played of this want them all to be painted so like three it took me like three hours in two different days so it was like almost six hours in total spray painting them waiting for them to dry all that jazz to like get them all painted but i got them painted and it looked pretty cool so i enjoyed it Anyway, that's uh, that's what made us happy this week, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of that. Let's uh, let's jump into the news. There's not much news. Let's just get into it. Simeon, uh, there was an article this week about interset, interset and intraset, outraset. I don't remember what they said. They, some weird, some wacky, some in, wacky words. Intraset and interset. Yeah, intraset. Yeah. Uh, so okay, I like kids funny de- words. Decided magic to man. Make up some words for I mean maybe they were things that these were probably words that already existed, but WizKids decided to put words to things that we already knew, but they wanted us to know them with words, and then they didn't want the, us to know them, so they password protected the article for some reason. Not sure why they did that, so we can't reference the actual article right now. But the gist of it, and believe you me. I can make the gist of something if I read it once. Mm. Uh, it was basically talking about how some figures and some like elements of the game are intraset, like inside of one set. So things that would be intraset would be like keywords or like similar to like the sideline mechanics that uh, the new superhero uh, secret identity characters and superior foe or not superior foes, maximum carnage, whatever that set's name is. It's been so long that I've actually seen the set. Um, the new carnage venom, Spider-Man gobbledygook set. That is a thing that is intraset. It works within its own set. 
It does not work with, like, you can't take a Peter Parker and turn him into a Spider-Man from outside that set. You need a Spider-Man that's inside that set. These are things that, like, people have been playing the game for, I don't know, six months have probably noticed. Uh, Maybe it takes a little bit longer, Mm -hmm. but I imagine it's something that you notice, like, right away. You probably don't put a word to it or make a big deal out of it. I don't know, like a whole article doesn't pop up within the first six months, but it is something that we've talked about before. Uh, we've mentioned before how like certain sets totally don't seem like they saw the big picture of hero clicks. Like they didn't look forwards or backwards before making the set. They just kind of threw it together. And my version of this, it's like how apparently like some sets get title characters and some sets don't, but that wasn't what they discussed in the article. It was how some figures are like an interest set design. So they're meant to be played within that set, which if you've ever played sealed and then had a good experience in sealed with character and then a bad experience and constructed with the same character, that's probably like an interest set character. It's a character that's good for a set, not so much outside. Uh, same as like Nimrod and all the, I don't, I guess I don't know if Nimrod has it, but all the Sentinels that have the brotherhood or, x-men keyword they can move one at the beginning of the turn that whole trait doesn't work great outside of that set but it does work occasionally and then the other one was interest or it was interest set and i don't remember extra set no, it was it was interest set and intra okay some are you interest something I it's a lot remember. to keep straight i get it i get it yeah like i said we can't reference the article basically they made up two terms one is sets that are inside of the main set. And then one of them was sets that are uh, a figure that'll be like good for, oh, uh, it's interset and intraset. So interset is what I was talking about. Interset inside inter, uh, intraset, mm-hmm. like the hero clicks as a whole. These would be things as they mentioned, like Jason Wingard, um, machine Smith figures that, work well with figures outside of the set not necessarily great inside the set but they get a lot more playability with other sets i think like barbados is a good example of this there's a lot of like examples of this anytime you have a figure that makes basically works off of like keywords or um just has an open-ended power that's like adjacent friendly characters or something like that Um, That works great outside of sets, and so they detailed how these are two aspects of the game that they look into and, like, design game effects around this. And that was it. They They had an article that talked about that and how they designed figures to work inside sets and then better figures that work outside of sets so you could play it, like, with their other things which is a great idea. Please do more of that and less of the former. But then they password protected it and they locked it down on us. And I have no idea why, because it's not like there was anything in the article that really, I don't know, said anything mind blowing. It was something, like I've said, something that like literally I think everyone has noticed at some point. So who knows why they closed it off. But in addition to that, we did get a new preview for the, X-Men... Uh, I believe in you. House of X, Simeon. Yes. House of X, Powers of X yes. is the name of that story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got a preview of... We want to talk he, about Sunspot a little bit. Was he a rare? I don't have him pulled up here. If you He's an him. uncommon. I've okay. got Mr. Robert DeCosta, <laughs> DeCosta pulled up here. He is 025. We're looking at his team-up card. So it's 025.01. Boy, oh boy. Doesn't that just jelly your jam? Uh, he has AIM, Avengers, New Mutants, and X-Men. All keywords you would think Sunspot should have. As you guys know, Sunspot, a few years back, made the US Avengers team when he bought out AIM. And he was just sort of like guy in a suit yeah, in charge. He's a real rich boy. Yeah. I don't remember yeah, if he, he really played is. into the X-Factor storyline that was happening at the same time. But I remember they did have like run-ins with AIM. So it was like... A weird, like, is he good guy, is he bad guy, because he's now controlling AIM, which is normally a bad place. A bad thing, but also 
it's also Avengers, so I guess it's good now. We changed their colors to be like America. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Anyways, so he, looking at the dial, he is flight indom six range, uh, one bolt. He is a wild card with the team player team ability. Seventy for seventy five points. He's just like a really good running shot pen blast piece. So he's running shot pen blast, uh, nine speed, eleven attack, eighteen defense with ESD and four damage. That's just really solid for 75 points like if we look at a bunch of just basic run sh running shot pen blast figures like throughout the years like uh we compared this to i don't know major victory who's also a 9 11 18 4 from guardians of the galaxy this dude is 20 points cheaper and i know it's a set at six years old but and then also major victory like took extra damage maybe maybe when every time he gets dealt penetrating which was not good when he only had toughness so robert here is just really solid he also has very similar damage power to major victory sorry everything just yeah. comes back to characters that are captain america related <laughs> some way or another for me for an uncommon, uh, he has leadership he has pretty good for an uncommon oh yeah for an uncommon yeah like he's he's just got really good solid solid values so I I quite I quite enjoy it. So, so for the same points, the, uh, for the same points from the newest set. Okay, also this an is uncommon. Some better comparison. We had here. a molten molten man figure who had Ooh. plasticity for his movement power. He had the uh, after he makes a range attack, you can generate blocking adjacent to the target, and then that blocking terrain marker. Uh, you get replaced with like a hindering terrain marker, but then his big thing was poison super strength, and it does penetrating damage with the super or with the poison and five range with three damage, eighteen defense. So the molten man here, mm -hmm. already for the same points, same rarity, uh, less range, less mobility, lower attack value, lower damage value. So it's, I mean. I'm not going to call power creep on it, but it is noticeably better. This sunspot is probably going to be one of those like golden uh, common uncommon pieces that you will actually want to grab because he looks on paper like he's really good. Yeah, not for sure. So his damage power is leadership and once per turn for all friendly characters with this power. When another friendly character that shares a keyword is given a second action token, after resolutions, roll a d6. On a 4 through 6, heal that character one click. That is really solid. you know. So maybe they push to get that second action token, and you can basically null and void a push. Or if they are lower on their dial and they need to uh, whatever heal up a little bit, and you're like, well, getting a second action token just isn't bad at all then <laughs> so that's also really solid so i really dig that um he also has a trait uh, i'll read his team up special trait here in a bit but let's do his other trait really quick he's uh, his damage power by the way is for his first four clicks so it'll only be on his first click on his 35 point line his 35 point line is basically the flip side of his top um sort of not really it has charge poison and then combat reflexes instead and he's going to be an 8 10 18 3 uh, on his top dial at 35 points Playing the suit at 35 is pretty solid if you want him to be a just kind of support figure with the whole leadership and the way to heal stuff. His en absorb energy won't be as useful with a shorter dial since you only have three clicks of life at 35, but let's just get into this trait. When he's targeted by a ranged attack, after resolutions, heal him one click and remove an action token from him. So that is solid. We've seen stuff like this on like Bishop and other uh, absorby style dudes, I guess. <laughs> That's the best way to put it so yeah one of the so that's that's a cool trait a it was like oh range attack and the attack missed with his super sense like he didn't have to use his super senses to make the attack miss but he also had super yeah. senses so if it attacked and it was range and missed just overall he healed one which is an interesting hmm. concept but as soon as your opponent like reads that or you tell them that they're just like ah so i will punch instead of shoot Pretty much. And you already want to punch this guy anyways, top dial, when he has a 18 defense with ESD. So, Or when you shoot him on bottom dial, instead of punch him when he has combat reflexes, well, he's only three clicks long. So it's not... <laughs> it's a trait that'll just sort of make your opponent think more than anything, and maybe even not work for you at all, but just make your opponent think, which is not terrible, I guess. His team-up is aim-themed team. When establishing theme teams, friendly characters with the aim keyword gain the Avengers keyword. After revealing forces, you may replace character cards with their alternates. You can't choose a team up if your starting characters share a name. 
So, once again, super weird. The AIM Avengers people, the generic AIM guys, already have the Avengers keyword. And then if you play Robert here, he or Roberto, excuse me, you can't even use this team up card because there's going to be multiple aim characters. If you yeah, wanted to add be a to different do... aim person that doesn't have Avengers on the team, yeah, which there aren't a ton of in modern, but in golden, if you want to do messing with shenanigans, you can. But as far as comic accurate wise, which is normally what these team ups or show accurate wise, which is normally what these team ups are, this kind of shows their lack squad. of foresight slash hindsight, where it's yeah, like the aim dudes set. that we made. Or int- <laughs> yeah. this is very interset. Not you could use set. you could use those kind of made up words to yeah. describe um, how not good this ability works and just how it is kind of just redundant and, and yeah, this is, bad. Again, like with team up cards, I feel like they need to give a little bit more time and care into these because this is a team up where they very much benefit from the generics that they can have, and so just straight up going. Like, no characters on this team up can share, like, the name. It's basically Highlander rule for key or mm-hmm. for uh, team up cards. And that's been the way, it, uh, that's always been the way since team up cards were announced um, a couple sets back. It's always been like Highlander. Once you activate a team up card, if you don't have a Highlander team, then it just doesn't work. But not being able to have, like, two aim white or, like, a couple aim red severely hurts just having an aim squad all together like that's one of the coolest things yeah. is having this like s- this army of you know aim blue white and red you've got like your beekeeper army and they you know they really boost your team right so it's just very funky like he's a good figure um without getting hung up on the team up card i like him a lot as a figure and i think he's a power uncommon pull him play him and sealed in this house of X set, I mean, a running shot 11 for four is awesome. 11 square reach. And obviously he's an X-Men. There's going to be X-Men in the set, you know, like I think he's great in the set. Obviously I haven't seen what else is in there, but just based on what I think makes a figure really solid and sealed. I think he's great. I think he's great and sealed. So yeah. Anyways, sure. that's uh, that's all I would want to talk about for news, I guess. Yeah. There's not a whole lot going on. Um, that was, and like we said uh, a few times, probably they password protected that article a few hours after releasing it. Yeah. So it wasn't even something like it's not even something that you can read now. Um, no idea why. If it was like some editorial error errors, they didn't catch something. It's weird because it still isn't unlocked, and that article has been out October 21st so it's been over four days since they locked that article down and it's still under lock and key um, by all means wow. get on get on to the uh, whiz kids hero clicks design and site thing and attempt to get the password correct um, I've tried a few hacker man yeah <laughs> see if you can hack time and unlock the the design insight article so that you can read the really nothing sandwich that it is because honestly i just don't know what they were talking about like what big secret were they giving us with this it was almost as if they were just straight up telling us something that we already knew uh i don't know who they were speaking to that's like if they were like hey occasionally we release sets with a big hero name in the title, like Spider-Man Venom Absolute Carnage. And then sometimes we release a set that's called like House of X and doesn't have that name in the title. It's like a, you know, storyline like set. And it's like, mm. yes, you are correct, WizKids. Thank you. Why did you lock this article? <laughs> Please give me the information on why this article is locked. It <laughs> makes no sense to me. I'm sure they sp- they spoiled something with this. They're like, oh no, they're gonna know too much by knowing this new word that we developed to describe how we design figures. I don't know. It's good stuff. Is it though? Is it though? But yeah. Anyways, guys, that is it for news this week. So. 
let's just jump into community. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Every uh, every week we ask you Community Tuesday's question. Sorry for jumping away from news like that, but I was just like, I got nothing to say. I'm like, this is so boring. Like, they locked it. They stole it from us. The information. I want to know more. My my need to fight aliens in the Badlands of South Dakota and then throw a knife at someone's hand and fix it with magical fixie gel and try to, you know, tell ESP whatever with Neil Patrick Harris. I just, I want to know more and they've locked it from me. Anyways. Um, I have no idea. Every week. References uh, were. Do you not? Oh, that was, uh, uh, I'm not even going to tell you. I'll tell you after the show. Was Simeon, Starship Troopers? They were reference? super obvious. Yeah, it was Starship oh, Troopers okay. reference, you idiot. <laughs> oh my gosh, this dude. Well, was so Neil Patrick Harris threw me second. off, and then he also brought me back. So, how could you forget his his role the in Starship Jill. Troopers? Anyways, yes. it really uh, really made his career. One could say. Anyways, every uh, every Community Tuesday, <laughs> sorry guys, Heroclix podcast, my bad. Uh, every every Tuesday, we ask you guys a community question. This one was interesting. I gotta say, it was a lot of mixed feelings all over the place no one platform was one side or the other and i really really liked that about this question so when it comes to tournament prizing would you rather have the option of a trophy or figures simeon uh how would you answer this question so for me it's i'm i'm almost split i'm almost split because i like figures my problem with figures slash maps or game elements, whatever. My problem with those is half the time I either already have the figure that I get or it's something that I'm not going to use. So I end up selling it. So it ends up just being quote unquote kind of a cash prize. Same with maps. What I do like about, and this goes with maps and stuff as well. What I do like about like trophies is... There's no incentive to sell it. Like, if I get a trophy that says, like, 2018 South Dakota champion, something like that, you know. Yeah. I have no interest in selling it, and I hope no one has any interest in buying it, because that would be weird. But um, So this is, like, one reason I do like the ROC state maps, because you do get a map that says champion, and, like, when you win first place, you get a map that says champion. Or if you're like me, uh, maybe you get one that says champion. Because spell check is hard. Uh, it's, it's really hard. It doesn't do, like, a red squiggly line when you send it in to people. Um, so, <laughs> I do like the trophy aspect where it's something, like, if you get first place, there's a trophy kind of, like, thing involved. Because... I will never sell my first place maps. I'll never sell like first place trophies or anything that like says like the specific place I got it or whatever. What I will automatically sell is any kind of figure that I get. So if I get like first place and my prize is a con exclusive lockjaw or power woman or what have you, I have no attachment to that because it has no attachment to the event or the accomplishment, if that makes sense. So, like, the accomplishment is a, is not attached to the prizing, then there's no reason to hang on to it. If the accomplishment is literally, like, written on the prizing, then it's, like, something that I want to display, I want to hold on to. And so I do have to go with trophies, because... And I'm going to lump first-place map wins in on this, especially, like, states. Well, mostly only states. I'm going to lump those in with that because uh, getting your name on something or like getting the title on something makes a difference. It's worth keeping a hold of. Whereas when it's a figure, you might as well just give me like a cash prize because I'm just going to sell it or whatever. Um, it's not going to have the same inherent value to me. Like uh, I was top eight in South Dakota uh, states recently and I got a Venom... Venom uh, Rocket Raccoon and the Merciless from Rebirth. Before I even left the venue, I had already sold the Rebirth to somebody that was there, or the 
yeah, the merciless rebirth chase to someone that was there. So that tells you like how little I cared about the figure that I won. I was just like, ah, uh, you know, like I'm never going to want to remember that I came in eighth at South Dakota States. But what I do have is like my event badges, uh, my championship maps, things like that. I have those like put away somewhere. So those are things that I do care about. So yeah. Long winded way of saying trophies over figures for me. Mm. Okay. I'm uh, sort of not really in line with you. Like I do see most figures as pretty much a cash prize. Um, it's a cash prize you have to work a little bit for to get your cash. Not not that hard to sell hero clicks, guys. Um, but that's pretty much what I see most prize figures as. Um, these last state tournaments, I did want a Captain Marvel just because I didn't have one, you know. So I can see wanting a figure if you know what the prize figure is going to be, and you're like, "Oh, I really, really, really want to own that figure." Um, so I can understand that line of thinking. But most of the time, especially in a national or worlds event. I honestly don't want any of the con exclusives. I think the last few years in a row, they've all been characters I just don't care about. Like you just plop down a Superman Prime or a Kyle Rayner or a Laveria, Lavana, <laughs> Le- whatever that chick was that bird like princess. she had like a stick. The Shiar bird she was princess. trash. Yes. She was, yeah, the uh, Shiar lady. And like I just sold them all because I didn't need LaLandra, any of those. So yeah. instead, it was basically a cash. Yeah. Oh, Lalandra. That's yeah. I mean, I'm sure whatever I said was close to uh, Lalandra. Sure. So like, I don't need those. Um, the I will say this: the figure prizes WizKids gives out for like the first place stuff, the full sets. Those are cool prizes, and I would I would definitely prefer that to a trophy, uh, only for the case that it is going to be worth like two thousand dollars once you get it if it's depending on the set i guess um you know which is cool however me winning that trophy the last event i was because i didn't care about galactus i still don't care about galactus um but like that trophy i liked i liked definitely way more than like winning galactus so i think for lower events where no matter what figures they could scrounge up, it's not just going to make you excited. I would just prefer a trophy, uh, especially if it's a cool event. Like this was the cool like National Guard event. So it says National Guard on it. It's an eagle. I'm a patriotic guy. So I think that's awesome. Um, so yeah, like cool thematic trophies like this, I think are great. Um, gluing a Heroclix character to a base and spray painting gold is cool too. Uh, but I think a is, real, yeah. real trophy is pretty sick. Um, and I think putting a plaque on a hero who's base is a very lame, lazy way to do a trophy. <laughs> Anyways, um, I, so I don't want to sound too sappy, but um, my my greatest hero clicks accomplishment to date is getting top eight in uh, 2018 worlds team worlds. So by no means singles worlds. I wasn't even close. But um, there was no trophy. Yeah, I was there was no say. plaque. There was there was nothing. Uh, so the prizing for that was one of every con, one of every ID, one of every blah, 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 down the line. We got a bunch of stuff for getting top eight in Team Worlds. And that was uh, me and Lewis and Kevin. And before that day, before that weekend, I had never met those two. And they were great guys. And it was a great team that we like pulled together. And we somehow managed to get top eight. We just like kind of lucked into it kind of just pulled our weight with like being all around good at plain sealed and the only thing i have to commemorate that is my pax unplugged badge that i've carved like top eight teams into and i still have that hanging from like my shelf because honestly i don't even remember all the figures that i won most of them i sold or traded or whatever they didn't mean anything to me but the group that like we pulled together and like how good we did, that's like a much better memory to me. So having that PAX badge with like how well I placed, that's always going to be a much better memory than having like the con exclusive Lockjaw or Blackbird or whatever was that year's thing. Right. Okay. Nice. So yeah, I think, I would say on a smaller scale, 100% trophies for me. 
and then on that like that big scale but then you bring up a good point where on the biggest scale is where you would want the most like something where it's like that's that memory and you have nothing so i think yeah i think every event should have a trophy for sure more so than figures to give out i think every event should have a trophy i think yeah i think i'm on that line of thinking now i think you brought up a really valid point okay so now that we get our answers out of the way that was like way more discussion than we normally do uh for community tuesdays but this was uh i think it shows how good of a question it was so um let's go ahead let's read three off each on uh, on facebook and twitter you want to hit us with one on uh facebook there simeon yeah, so the first one on Facebook, we're going to go with good old Tyler Murin. He says, figures and maps would always be the priority, especially if I can only if I can only have one over the other. But a trophy for nationals and or worlds would be a nice added perk. And so I agree with this like like I said, like if you get if I play in worlds and I get like top eight, that's something that I kind of want to commemorate. So I understand that I'm not getting a trophy. I'm not getting any kind of like added thing to like being top eight. Um, but if I ever won like nationals or something, you know, something more slightly more realistic, let's be honest, it's not realistic for me, but slightly more realistic. If I won nationals, having a trophy would be pretty cool. So I agree with that. Right on. First one on Twitter is going to be Chains McCall. Well, when I win Worlds, I'm making a duo clicks of myself and Calder. And I guess we kind of forget to say that <laughs> the whole, probably the best thing is the making a figure. Like, for sure. I think without a doubt, making an official figure is probably the best prize. So that's pretty fair chance. That's pretty fair. Yeah. I mean, and that's to go along with trophies, literally being able to help design a figure of your choosing and then getting your name as like the designer and some, I guess some national winners get, get to do this as well. Um, that's pretty sweet. That's not a thing that like, you know, you'll ever have taken away from you. Anyone that owns that figure will always have the card that says made by, you know, so-and-so at whatever event. Uh, next up, we're going to go with good old Jeff Polier, who is a man of the people, says, I have no interest in trophies. Game elements as prizing work for me. If WizKids wants to make it extra special, have alternate paint jobs on their figures for the winners of the largest tar- tournaments. That's that's a trophy that's useful. So, yeah, I totally get this. Having uh, like a game element that... Maybe it's like an alternate thing or like a master paint job or whatever. They have like somebody specially do the figure for you and that is like your prize. So it's not only special to you, but it's also something that you can technically take and play on the like other tournament circuits. It makes sense. Yeah. And that's one of the that's one of the good things about the game. Uh there are like a lot of other collectible games where your prizing would just be cash or like sealed product or something like that. But like hero clicks does give you like the opportunity to win like pretty special stuff sometimes. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say special stuff, special stuff. Yeah. Okay. Right on. Uh, next on, Let's do Twitter. Let's do Michael Fedor says, I've been trying to get a big trophy event like the Stanley Cup every year and inscribe names on it for each year. No store here locally has wanted to caretake it. I think that is a really cool idea where like the winners inscribed sort of like a a trophy that rotates around. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Um, But I think it's going to have to be something where you have to put nose to the grindstone boots to the pavement and try to like do it yourself. And then you can hold yeah. your own events. If no store wants to uh, and, invest uh, in like a trophy thing like that. But I think that that's the thing. It's a really cool idea. Omaha uh, doesn't do it for hero clicks, but for magic, the gathering, there is like a Midwest, like regional open that they've hosted the last couple years or whatever. I think it's called, I don't know what it's called, but it's like some sort of Midwest regional open thing. And every time somebody wins, the trophy stays at Krypton, but the winner gets like their picture put up and their name 
engraved on like the trophy so it like stays in this glass case and anytime you like walk by it you're like i don't know who that is but they won magic and i mean i'm sure if i was a magic player i'd be like man and that's the guy i gotta Whoa, beat, you know that's kind of thing. mr yeah sure yeah that's mr one last year and potentially the year before or something but yeah that's a cool thing um having not necessarily like a trophy you take home but like a shared kind of monument that like uh shows all the people that have won and then last we're gonna go with on facebook just uh to round it out with somebody that agrees with me um we're gonna go with good old steve de carlo says trophies by a mile i firmly believe people only say otherwise until their trophy shelf has enough on it to look cool then there's no question and i believe that his trophy shelf probably has enough on it to uh to prove that there's no question mine is sorely lacking so i don't know what that feels like but um yeah may we all be as qualified and uh successful as steve de carlo someday with all of his trophies <laughs> Okay. There's only right one on. trophy he's right won on. that matters to me. And uh, I don't know if he... Okay, he probably doesn't is. even know, but... Here it is. Some people know. Are you talking about the belt? I have no idea. No. No. Oh, okay. Belt. I was like... I, was, I, I thought you were rubbing in the heavyweight championship again in my face. No, no. I'm talking about uh, Steve DiCarlo win. There's only one of his wins that actually sticks out to me. Oh. Oh, okay. I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know. All right. Good. Good. We're going to go with yeah, I <laughs> We're going to go with Woody on Twitter says, "I'd say trophy figures rotate. A trophy is something you can keep. The Game of Thrones LCG did plaques, and I still have mine on display. They're neat." And I think uh, I think that also just kind of sums it up is that it's it's just so freaking neat. They're just so cool. Like, you know, I didn't really like any of my, like, trophies I got for wrestling in 4-H, mostly because I didn't win any trophies in wrestling. I was really bad. Uh, let's skip past that. But, like, in 4-H, I got a lot of trophies all the time. And I was just like, I'd honestly rather have money. I felt, like, bad because, like, I didn't care about 4-H that much. Oh, I know. That's, that's like, a sin in the agriculture community to not care about 4-H that much. But, like, I didn't, you know. But I care about Heroclix. So, like, my Heroclix accomplishments... I just care about way more than anything like 4H related. So for Hero Clicks, I want a trophy to show off my like really sweet accomplishments for sure. I've like won more, than more wrestling related things than Hero Clicks by a mile. Uh, I think my mom has like a chest full of all of like the medals and whatever tiny trophy things that I won, but she has no, none of my Hero Clicks trophies. None of them. Mm. That sounds very about proud. right. That I'm makes very proud sense. of the man I've become. Mm, proud's not the word I'd use, but sure thing. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, let's skip past that awkwardness with a uh, Jedi Legend Hero Clicks tip of the week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. All right, so he says he didn't realize this until recently, uh, but this is an important thing for everybody to know. You can take actions and move in your starting area and retain first turn immunity as long as you don't leave the starting area, making powers like TK very viable. Uh, obviously, you can TK an object towards your friendly guy. He can power action, pick it up. You never have to leave the starting area, so you still first turn immune. This is kind of the same thing for characters that can start the game outside of your starting area, not objects, but like actual figures. KC, so that Jay the big one. Yeah, like KC figures will have first turn immunity. Um, the J. Jonah Jameson pog uh, that can start the game anywhere will have first turn immunity as long as he doesn't move. So stuff like that, just so you guys know. Uh, very important to realize, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, first turn immunity. You don't leave your starting area or if you don't move when you are in a space outside your, your starting area, right. that's where you began yeah, you the can, game. You, you can still definitely safe. move within your starting area. It's If you take yep. a step like outside of that pink area... And then come as back soon as you leave, you are technically yeah. free game. Yep. Yep. No going out, coming back in. Then you get that safety border, that safe purple border. No, no, sir. No, ma'am. I don't think so. 
Anyways, that's uh, that's the Jedi Legend Heroes tip of the week. We have some Malcolm Rush questions that uh, we're going to get to here, and that'll, that'll end the show. That's in Japan! Japan? No, 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 no. I can't go to Japan. So we got Halloween questions, baby. Oh, it's spooky. Spooky season. Spooky time of year. Uh, although, if I'm being real with the listener, uh, we got a good solid amount of snow recently. Everything is coated in snow, and I was kind of like, a, you know, uh, uh, uh. You gave me a heart, and then the very next How day, oh, you took it away. I, dude, as soon as there's snow, I'm just like, ah, it is Christmas time. You Here we go. Your, you take your sand wizard holiday somewhere else. <laughs> it is Halloween time until I know. We say otherwise. I know it's Halloween, but there's snow, and there's, I know, I know. But, anyways, let's still keep it Halloween. <clears throat> All I want for Christmas. Anyways, uh, last year. Uh, Malcolm says he asked Halloween questions about hero clicks this year. Let's ask questions about your favorite and least favorite Halloween movies, TV shows, books, and comic books. So uh, I'm just going to do favorites. I didn't want to do least favorite. I honestly don't watch that many spooky, scary movies. So I followed the, um, the instructions, which was just like a genre and whether or not that is a scary version of that genre is left to be seen. But I also chose some Heroclix figures that you could use to represent characters in the movies or show uh, that work. Some of them just don't. So this is still still Heroclix related. So don't worry, yeah. guys. Uh, and you can number just one, assume though, if I if I don't mention like, well, I guess you can't assume. But if I don't mention like a specific type of something, it's probably falls into like less favorable than the ones that I mentioned. Like if I'm not like oh right. my my least favorite ghost, it's like no no no, Casper and all those other ones are just least favorite by default. If I didn't mention them, and I'm retracting my Casper sp- statement, so I did not mention. I was about them. to say He's my least. Yeah. Okay, by a long time. Savage savage discussion on on Casper the friendly ghost here. Yeah, how dare poor Casper? How ooh ooh? How dare he be a child ghost? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go into that. Uh, we, I think, I think I'm just going to leave it there. Um, anyways, so number one is monsters. Simeon, you got a monster. You got a favorite monster movie. Uh, so favorite monster movie. Technically, no, but uh, I will throw one out there. There's a good old black and white film called Teenagers from Outer Space. And there's a monster that they unleash in that movie. It's just a horrible movie all around, but it is fun to watch. It's one of those movies that's like so bad it's good. So Teenagers from Outer Space, they release this monster that's, from what I can remember, literally just a guy holding a lobster and like slowly panning it across like the camera, like pretending that it's like walking through a miniature city, like taking down power lines and stuff. I don't know if the lobster was actually alive when they filmed, but it's clearly just a normal sized lobster in front of some miniaturized buildings and stuff. And that was like the big monster of the movie. And when they finally reveal it, like their master plan is to reveal this. It's like, ah, these aliens that look exactly like humans released a monster that looks exactly like a crustacean from planet earth and uh big big think yeah Hmm. it's pretty bad um Hmm. but uh some some good favorites that i have i really like the saint of killers from the preacher series he's not technically a monster but he's not technically like anything he's a saint but he's not good so he's kind of a monster um eve from the supernatural series uh, very small stint in the Supernatural series, uh, which of course is filled with all kinds of monsters. Uh, they're up to like season 15 now, though, so I don't even remember what season she appeared in. And then I really like the SCP stuff and like Lovecraftian kind of like style stuff. So SCP, for those of that you that don't know, started off mm-hmm. as like creepy pasta. It started off as like online people like pretending to be like a government agency and like redacting information on these like creatures and monsters that they had like captured but it has kind of grown into like this it's its own database now 
and there's been several games and stuff that have been made around the idea of SCP, and it's pretty cool. Um, if you have like a couple hours some night and you just want to read through some like somewhat cheesy, somewhat spooky kind of like little stuff, um, as creepy pasta is, you know, it varies depending on the writer. It's literally just whatever they decided they wanted to go with. Sometimes it goes, like, you know, from, like, a haunted vending machine that, like, spits Coke bottles out and, like, kills people upon impact because it spits them out so fast to, like, something that's, like, truly interesting to read about. Um, but that's, like, the SCP thing. SCP and, is just uh, it's just internet goosebumps for anybody yeah, that wants to yeah, dumb down for, sure. for them. And it's, it's basically, it's people it's basically that, yeah. yeah for the most part, couldn't get an actual publisher to put their stories on paper. So they yeah. went to SCP, like, dot .wikispot dot, uh, .wordpress com or whatever the main page is. And then least favorite monster, I mean, yeah. Just, like, if I didn't mention it, assume that it's not as favorite as one of these. I don't know. I don't really have, like, a monster that I'm truly, like... That was really bad. Except that one movie where they had the human-shark hybrid. That was bad. But other than that, just generally, most monsters, not my favorite. Okay. Okay. Uh, my favorite monster movie, if I don't even know if this counts. I don't watch generic monster movies all that much. So I went with uh, Kong Skull Island. The only movie where you can find Nick Fury, Doctor Doom, Captain Marvel, and Loki all in one nice one nice place. And Jack Black. I like King Kong. Oh yeah, Jack Black is also in there too. He'll be in No, Marvel he is someday. not. No, he is not. And what? John C. Riley's there, not Jack Black. Oh. Is that who you meant? Is Jack Black not get, not in Kong Island? I thought no, he was. Okay. He is not in Kong. No, 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 no. Okay. He's in Jumanji. Which has similar grassy islandy feels, but no, no. All right, let's skip over that. Anyways, but if you ever want to represent King Kong, obviously the perfect hero whose figure is Titano from the Superman and Wonder Woman set. He is a big gorilla thing. You just take off the laser eye head. He has a normal head, and you use the um, I guess black Titano, not the white Titano, if you want it to look like Godzilla, since it's the whatever type of monkey that has black hair for i don't know Another anyways laser eye one. that's what i would suggest yeah no not this not that one that one's not not great and i think titanium is also just funny funny monkey so yeah there you go that's that's my uh monster movie pick least favorite monster movie godzilla 98 uh literal trash and that we'll just move on i don't want to talk about it more than we have to i actually vampires Simeon. No, it's fine. It's Did fine. you? Of course you do. Yeah. <laughs> you do. Of course you do. Jeez. So, vampires. All right. Um, Simeon. Vampires. I've got a couple. Uh, one of the standouts, of course, is from a comic that's also been mentioned already. The Preacher comic uh, has Cassidy, and oh. he's a very typical like uh, vampire. So, he's uh, allergic to sunlight. That whole thing needs blood to like heal. Um, but he's got a lot of like personality and he's got a lot of stuff going on. And this is from the comics. Uh, the TV show Cassidy is t a lot different. Um, I'll just leave it at mm. that. He's still interesting and he's not that much different that I don't like him. Some of my favorites from movies would be, uh, in blade two, they're called the Reapers. It's the weird like predator vampires where their faces like split open it's like a i don't remember how they described it it's like some sort of mutation in the vampire strain of virus or whatever and the reapers reproduce by like not fully killing their victims so they they're basically like vampires that have gotten hungry to the point where they're like lower class vampires and they've gotten hungry to the point where they're like faces split open and they start feeding on other vampires as well as humans and then they you know call the vampires call in blade and they're like hey this is blade 2 you need to help us and he's like cool and uh the guy from uh you know hellboys there and he's like 
do you blush? Ron Perlman. That's, yeah, that's the the big there funny part of Blade Two, I guess. Um, otherwise, I don't think you can beat like the classic Dracula movies, um, Nosferatu, and actually Netflix just released a Dracula movie. If you're like big into vampires and vampire lore kind of stuff, the Netflix Dracula that like released not too long ago is really good. It's uh, genuinely kind of scary, and it, like, hits on a lot of the same tropes, but, like, keeps you guessing mm-hmm. at the same time, and it's just... I also really love much- Hubie Halloween by Netflix. That one I, I heavily enjoyed. Hubie Halloween? Oh, wait, what? <laughs> no, it's it's just a really, really bad Adam Sandler Netflix oh, okay. movie that came out. <laughs> sounds just sounds like you're, it. You're actually good choice. Anyways, keep going. So... Uh, to tie that, to tie my favorites into Hero Clicks, um, you can't go with a better Dracula than the one from Fear itself. As it stands right now, mm. he is just really good. The one from Amazing Spider Man is pretty good, but I'd only pick him if I wanted my figure not to have a sword. If I want my figure to have a sword, or if I'm okay with it having a sword. The one from Fear itself is terrifying, top dial and terrifying when he heals to like you know quote unquote starting dial to top dial and then the blade reapers there's not really a hero clicks version of those but if you take sauron from the x-men dark phoenix saga uh the amount of ways that he can heal and the amount of like ways he can like do damage and stuff to opposing characters is probably close enough where if you like played a couple of Saurons, you could at least dial wise pretend that like those were the Reapers from Blade 2. And then uh, least favorite, I actually did have to mention something here because I really don't care for Twilight. And this is beyond like sparkly vampire. I don't care about like the sparkly vampire didn't burst into flames thing. That's not always a vampire trait that they can't be in sunlight. So I didn't care for that. I don't, like, that didn't make a difference to me. What I really didn't like about the Twilight Saga, or however many movies there were, was all the additional powers that they added on to being, like, super fast, super healing, super tough, super strong. They were like, ah, some of these need to, like, see the future, or smell stuff really good, or, I don't know. I honestly can't remember all the powers. Um... That and I just really don't like my vampires as good guys. Blade gets a pass because he's half vampire, but good guy vampires, like, vampires make the best bad guys as far as, like, generic villains go because they're animalistic, but they're also, like, cerebral. They, like, have human minds. They can, like, think and plot and stuff. And yeah. so they were especially cere- cerebral in Blade 3 when the cerebral <laughs> assassin was a vampire. Yes. <laughs> when Ryan Reynolds had to go one on one with the game, as Calder would say, H H H. All right, we were. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a long time into the game when that. Happened. Yeah. You I said, also made you said <laughs> Baylor Club. Yeah, the Baylor Club. <laughs> number one fan clearly i am yeah Uh, (laughs) so for like the twilight vampires uh as far as hero clicks goes i said these would just work with any generic vampire because they at the end of the day they're just a generic vampire they all got like special powers and stuff but like who cares i don't care about any of the twilight vampires and what they could or couldn't smell or why they could see the future or whatever. It was all bad, in my opinion. I really hated the last movie because it was this cool fight scene. And then at the end of it, they were like, hey, that just didn't happen. Guess what? I can read the future. None of that happened. None of that happened. All that big fight scene. Yeah, as someone who has seen no Twilight movies, (laughs) you're not... This is very much... I have no idea what you're saying. So, Calder, imagine watching three movies... And you're like, okay, like build yep. up. so imagine the prequels for Star Wars. So yep. the, the prequels to Star Wars build up to the third one where it's Obi-Wan and it's Anakin and they're fighting 
and you know, like Anakin gets all chopped uh, up and no, stuff. No, wait, 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 wait. Spoilers for uh, for Revenge of the Sith here, guys, really quickly. So if you want to, <laughs> spoiler for Revenge of the hasn't Sith watched from two thousand and five. <laughs> so go like, ahead and skip forward. <laughs> so like, egg, Anakin gets like legs cut off and whatever, and like he's laying there. And then all of a sudden, the movie rewinds 20 minutes to before the fight, and it's just those two talking, and Anakin's like, ah, I've seen the future, and I lose. So, cool, like, we're just not going to fight. And that's how the movie ends. How would mm. you have felt about episode three if that's how the movie ended? I would have hated it. That yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, whoa, you're telling me that cool fight didn't happen? One of like the best fights in all of Star Wars? Yeah, I don't know. That would suck. I I anyone could watch that and justify but also, it. Also, we spent almost five minutes talking about <laughs> Twilight, so we should not anymore. I have a lot of <laughs> grievances <laughs> with this movie. <laughs> On this Hero Clicks podcast, yes. we've talked about Twilight far too long. Um, so, my favorite vampire movie probably isn't, but I'm going to go with it because of the Hero Clicks figure I get to choose. He's going to be the little vampire. The reason why is because they bite a cow and we get a vampire cow hey, in the movie, which Hellcow. who you can represent by Hell Cow, a.k.a. Bessie from the Deadpool and the X-Force set. I love love me some Bessie. Actually, one of my third. No joke. One of my favorite hero clicks figures, period, is Bessie. Oh, I love her, man. Bessie the Hell Cow is my girl. She's great. We need a herd. We need a herd of hell cows. I need to own like 300 hell cows, which oh, would maybe own, be all the ones in existence. I own probably. six. And I've you played six. Oh, yeah. I've played six hell herd. cows. It's a good herd. With the Barbados. And so all the hell Farmer cows were Barbados. copying the 12 attack. It actually, you know, it laid waste to a JSA team because they didn't have reducers. Um, got single-handedly destroyed by the super Air superman with like charge flurry when he double mm. crit hit my barbados mm. to death but other than that well that's just unfair <laughs> really was all right moving on number three is werewolves simeon all right so werewolves i honestly do not care that much about like not my biggest thing um so favorites is like the underworld series and I really like them, the Underworld series, because they're kind of, you know, the underdog in that movie to mm -hmm. to really just, like, lay it on thick. They're the underdogs. They do hunt in packs. They, like, have that whole, like, group mentality where only, like, you know, if, like, one in the pack falls, the rest of them are, like, hurt by that and stuff. I really liked that. And then my least favorite werewolf is almost everything else. Like, I just don't really care for werewolves in movies. It usually doesn't come off as, like, scary. It's usually super cheesy. Same as TV shows. Most of the time it's super cheesy. Um, even, like, the ones where it's, like, half transformation or whatever. Kind of just cheesy. And this is, like, including Supernatural, where there's, like, a lot of werewolves. Pretty bad. Don't really care for it. Um... And, like, typically they don't even get, like, that big of a leg up on people. They're just like, now I'm man with fur and claws. And you're like, great. But, like, he's got a gun, so what are you going to do? But is it is it silver-tipped bullets? I think <laughs> not, Simeon. There's a great farce. Is it a stick with a silver handle? I think not. There's a, a great far side comic where a guy goes into a shop to buy silver bullets and then the guy like the shop owner guarantees their silver bullets and later he gets attacked by a werewolf and the werewolf's wearing like the same tie as the shop owner and it's like in his last moments greg realized where he noticed that like tacky tie earlier and it's like a thought bubble to the shop owner um as far as hero clicks goes We've got several werewolves. Uh, the Amazing Spider-Man ones are still my favorite, even though their point value is kind of wonky. I really like those. You can't really go wrong with the werewolf alphas from Rest in Peace set or like just the, the underlings from the same set. But honestly, we haven't gotten a lot of werewolves in uh, Hero Clicks. There's like Man-Wolf and stuff like that. 
Yeah, not recently. Yeah, it's just been Man-Wolf since RIPD, I guess. It's been a hot minute. Uh, my favorite werewolf anything is, of course, uh, Man and Wolf, the beautiful four-part series in the 1980s uh, hotline Captain America run where oh, Captain boy. America gets turned into a werewolf. Uh, this also stars one of Simeon's favorite comic characters, Wolverine. It also have Wolf's Bane, Cable, and Dr. Druid all make an appearance in this comic series, as well as what's her face? Night, not Night Nurse. Uh, she's the scientist lady. She's in the cap set. I can't think of her name. Anyways, I'll get it here in a second. Oh, I was thinking um, of the lady yeah, with obviously. the uh, gem, but... Uh... Bloodstone. No, 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 no. no. This chick of. has no. The Bloodstone saga is a different, completely unrelated to the werewolf saga. This is I'm talking about Nightshade. That's her name. Um, she can get the werewolf serum, special power, Modox Eleven. That'd be my werewolf choice. Next up, witches, wizards, and warlocks. Yeah, this one's so open ended because. Honestly, like this includes witches, wizards, warlocks, anyone that does magic, essentially, it, like falls into one of these categories to an extent. So my favorite, uh, like media versions of this would be like Hellblazer, which is of course John Constantine's run. Um, it's one of like the better John Constantine runs in DC. Uh, Jonathan Strange and Mister Norrell, for those that like books that aren't harry potter that's a really good book that doesn't hurt to read uh in the saga comics saga is of course an image comic the people of wreath wreath is a uh satellite moon slash planet around the main uh planet where they're like kind of enslaved slash uh lower class citizens um and they all have, like, horns of some sort. So sometimes they're rams, sometimes it's, like, antlers or something like that. But I, the one thing that all of these comics have in common, or comics slash books have in common, is that the, the characters aren't all powerful. They can't just, like, whip out this, like, Omega spell out of nowhere. It takes time to, like, prepare stuff. It takes time to, like, do what they want to do. And magic always has a cost. And I really like that aspect of magic. I really like the aspect where, like, you can't just, like, say words and things happen that, like, you know, years of your life are taken off or, like, you have to sacrifice something. So in uh, Saga, to, like, give their spaceship more power, he has to, like, throw his uh magical sword into the fire to like give the spaceship more power it's it's you'd have to read it to like actually get the like the full point but that kind of thing um constantine is constantly like doing stuff that hurts him kind of thing uh jonathan strange and mr norrell like the same kind of thing they have to do all that um the stormbreaker series i can't remember who wrote that but uh that's the Harry Dresden files, I guess, technically. Um, same thing. Uh, magic comes at a cost. You have to, like, expend your own, like, life force or, like, some sort of energy to, like, have magic readily available. Least favorite. And so for this is, like, literally anyone with the mystical keyword probably fits for this. Uh, Doctor Strange is, like, one of the few that, like, stick out as, like, somebody that can just, like, say words and things happen, and there's no consequences. Um, but it'd be interesting if we had, like, a Mystics team ability where it was, like, plus three combat values, but you take two unavoidable at, like, the end of your turn. Like, that was the team ability. Uh, but, like, yeah, Doctor Strange typically doesn't have any bad effects, but, uh, like... Etrigan, uh, of course, John Constantine, Tim Hunter, Zatanna, those are all witches, wizards, warlock kind of things. Least favorite is the Harry Potter series. It's a great series of books to read, but, like, my gosh, is there, like, almost no stakes at any point in time. It's like, you can literally just cast any spell, and it just frustrates me that they never do. I'm like, hey, 
you know all these spells. It takes literally just saying the word to do the spell. You should just do the spell, and then they don't. And that's why that's my least favorite. Also, huh? Artemis sorry, I, uh, yeah. I fell asleep there for a second. You, you're talking about a bunch <laughs> of crap. I don't care about. Um, anyway, uh, I went with uh, Lord of the Rings, and I said starter game Gandalf. I honestly don't care at all about witches, wizards, and warlocks. And I guess my real like favorite thing is probably the old Sabrina the Teenage Witch show, since I really enjoyed mm. watching reruns of that growing that up. Is a super the new fun Sabrina show. the Teenage Witch show is straight up trash, and it makes me want to punch everyone in the face who was a part of that show. Uh, I'm not gonna uh, say so it's is New Riverdale. It's just if you. It is straight up trash. Shut up, Simeon. You, no, you talked for long enough it's about magic. It's not as fun as the old it's one. Bad. It's, it's bad. It's bad. Uh, different. The old one was just so good and campy and homey, and I loved it. And Salem talked, and it was awesome. Salem um, still talks. Anyways, He's just a human most of the time. <laughs> it's No, it's not the same. It's not the <laughs> same, Simeon. It is not the same. Anyways, um, and Melissa Joan Hart is a sweetheart. And that's, that's all I have to say. And also, if you like Riverdale, you are also trash because that is a spit in the face of the real that. comics that are good. All Unless right, they're going to do crossovers like the Riverdale comics that just take it off the air. That show is... Yeah. Yeah. But that's neither here nor there. Not witches, wizard, or warlock related. So number five, Frankenstein. Let's keep this to a minute answer here, Simeon, before I pass out. All right, Talking minute on the clock. Wizards and their favorites for magic are... use. <laughs> so just to go back, to, uh, which is wizards and warlocks? Uh, why? <laughs> why are we going back? <laughs> no, uh, my favorite Frankenstein media is, of course, uh, Young Frankenstein. The Mel. Oh no, I blanked up. Mel Brooks. Good golly, go. I can't believe I forgot Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks' Young Frankenstein. If you haven't seen Young Frankenstein, literally just watch it. I don't care if you have to pay $300. It's worth the $300 to have the experience of watching Young Frankenstein. It is okay. an awesome movie. Um, I think it's free on like something somewhere. Probably a pirate-able website or just YouTube. But anyhow, Young Frankenstein's awesome uh, Penny Dreadful, I think it's still on Netflix. It's a British, like, dramatic thing. But they bring in a lot of, uh, a lot of, like, classic villain kind of stuff. So in Penny Dreadful, there is both a Frankenstein the Doctor and several Frankenstein the Monsters. And both acted just, like, so very good. Um... I don't know who the actors are, but they did an amazing job. And then worst, I went with the I Frankenstein movie and the Frank and Castle run of Frank Castle because uh, the Punisher, after he gets like chopped up, it would have been cool if he was just dead for a while and then resurrected and not Frank and Castle. I like it was goofy and fun, but that's not the kind of Frank Castle that I like. I don't really like goofy fun. Monster Castle. I thought it was boring and dumb, but that's just my opinion. Um, and of course, you know, for figures, we've got both the Dr. Frankenstein, the monster of Dr. Frankenstein, and also a Frankencastle. Any monster that's kind of like a mishmash kind of thing can fit into whatever these would be, but really, like, there's already the pre made ones, so. I went with a Fear Itself run, the Fearful Four. It is a team of She-Hulk, Frankenstein's Monster, Howard the Duck, and Nighthawk. It's a really fun like four-issue run within Fear Itself where there's so much fear going on in the world. Man-Thing is kind of having like a fear overlord, overload, and he's like just burning down New York just by walking around. So if you ever read Fear Itself, it's, this sort of makes sense. Um, and they fight... Um, the hate monger. I don't know what's his name. He's it's not a hate monger. It's a, like psycho Dr. Psycho, something like that. And he has like a control board or whatever that can turn up emotions or something weird. Um, and that's what he does. He turns up the fear on man thing and scares everybody. But uh, Frankenstein's monster from ASM, uh, his sculpt perfectly is kind of from one of these panels. 
And I don't know if it's based off it, but it works for when Howard first jumps on his back to try to get him to calm down. Um, and as you know, Frankenstein is very much a character um, made out of fear, um, which is cool. So that is going to have to be my my Frankenstein choice. Although I will agree with Simeon, uh, definitely watch Young Frankenstein. It is really good. I don't think the play is that good, um, but I think the movie is for sure. If we ever get a Shrek. But the play is fine. He makes a decent Ooh, baby. Frankenstein monster. Ooh, baby. <laughs> Uh, I want a Shrek set more than anything in the world, right? Not, re not really, guys, yeah. but a Shrek set would be good. Uh, all right, next up is Aliens, number six. Uh, so Aliens, you know, Xenomorphs work really well in the Marvel Universe. The Brood are basically the Marvel version of Xenomorphs. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. seen the, uh, what do they call them? The uh, alternate comic covers that they've done for the newer marvel uh sets yeah, or the newer marvel kinda came out i guess yeah they're pretty recent um but it's the actual xenomorphs and the uh the comic art the the cover art i guess alternate covers um so xenomorphs are always cool uh i don't know how you get scarier than those like weird machine mixed with biology kind of creature things so the brood are the basically only thing that you can substitute for that. Uh, there are like horror yeah. clicks that you could use the sculpts, but you wouldn't really be able to use the dials. Same with predators. Uh, for a good predator, it would depend on if it's like a nameless predator or if it's like one that's actually got some trophies. Uh, and that could vary from like a war machine dial to like a Craven the Hunter kind of dial. There's a lot of like wiggle room in as far as like what they can do. Um, I, I actually, aliens are one of my favorite things in horror because I don't think they get enough love. Uh, I don't think they ever get done correctly, but um, good aliens, in my opinion, like a good movie about aliens are ones that like, we just don't have a chance against uh, the one with what's the guy's name. Um, Tom Cruise with like the tripod aliens and like the the war of the worlds awful movie i don't believe for a second that an alien civilization planned for like hundreds and thousands of years or whatever any amount of time had the technology to get here and wipe out humanity and didn't think like ah maybe we will need to be protected from their atmosphere slash bacteria and, like, seagulls ended up taking them down because of all the bacteria that they got. And so they all got colds, and they all died. And that is absolutely trash to me. That is my least favorite. Um, and to fill out my least favorite, also, killer clowns from outer space. Anytime the humans win, just bad. Makes no sense. Uh, I, you know, I, don't, I like human triumph. I'm sorry. Boo. I'm going to stop you right there. I like I like Boo. human triumph. I like the idea that dude with the baseball bat can kill alien. Joe Quinn Phoenix can <laughs> save the day. Phoenix, like, yeah. I, yeah. I like, I I like that. that. Screw your advanced technology, Same, idiot. I have also a cold. Also, least favorite, Independence Day. Welcome to Earth, says Will Smith. And like, then he punches the alien. Dang, to death. Boo. dang dude! Boo. Independence not, Day is you're really gonna say you technology. don't like Independence Day, really, dude? Oh it's my god! It's a bad what movie. A, the way we what a hot is so bad. What a cold take, I should really say, <laughs> uh, bro. I don't know if I can get behind hating Independence Day, though, bro. It's I don't know. About it's that hard one. to like. You can't just be like, and we won. Because we hacked advanced alien technology using old Earth technology. Like, boo. Boo. I they think traveled Jeff all this way it. and don't. we somehow <laughs> outsmarted them. I don't believe this. I don't like it. But as a have, movie. I don't have any heroes. But as a movie, it's a good movie. Get, oh, it's a good yeah, movie. Get what's... Yeah. I just don't like how the aliens are portrayed. Dude. And I don't have any okay. hero clicks that would come close to this uh, hybrid of from the Avengers don't. Assemble set. Maybe uh, he works for like a lot of like weird yeah. alien stuff. But other than that, yeah. Okay. Well, Simeon has terrible uh, alien-related opinions because 
I don't watch a lot of alien movies. I'm going to be real with you guys. So for my favorite, favorite movie, I wrote down Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I watched it super <laughs> recently. And I was like, this movie is hilarious. This movie is just great. I like no, it is a great movie. horror stuff. The um, only thing I don't like about it now, is that the, the humans win. But it is a great movie. Uh, so I also back. But here's the thing, bro. The clowns, clowns win for 99% of the movie. <laughs> yes. It is not until like the very end do they figure out, oh, they got a pretty obvious weakness. Yeah, um, it's the yeah. old lost in space technique or whatever that game was. So, Shoot and I'm going to say Obnoxio part. the Clown can be used as one of the killer clowns if you want to. More classically looking uh, clown I from mean, outer I space. I believe he there. does have poison and so he's got like he's got a lot of the uh, he's got some of the stuff space clown and like that movie was so funny and creative and it's on netflix if you guys got it like killer clowns from outer space it is just a wild time all right next up we're kind of the show is starting to get like over an hour and 20 minutes so like we got to wrap this bad boy up so uh next up is a mummy mummy films all right mummy mummy films it's pretty not- easy <laughs> there's not a lot to go off of so for the mummy favorites are going to be any that uh have emotep so that's the brendan fraser ones um of course like the the newer uh mummy mummy returns uh whatever the third one was called and then the boris karloff the old uh classic ones were also emotep anything else uh whether it's jet lee or whoever that lady was I don't even bother with those ones. Um, Cleopatra. <laughs> the rest of like the like the rest of the mummy movies really don't matter. Uh, oh, mummies that know. you can use for hero clicks would be like the Living Mummy, um, from the Amazing Spider Man. Pretty solid dial even today for like a standalone mummy. You can have hordes of them from. I think there's mummies in. No, there weren't any mummies in the Rest in Peace set. It was skeletons, huh? No, dude, you'd yeah. To, no mummies. Yeah, you'd have to substitute the skeletons for the Rest in Peace mummies because there weren't any actual mummies. Um, I think it's literally just Amazing Spider-Man that is the only... Uh, the zombie, uh, or Zuvembi, is kind of a mummy, but kind of not. So, uh, yeah, that's like the only thing we really have for Hero Clicks. Uh, for mummies, I I also went with the Brendan Fraser series of movies. More specifically, uh, I think we got to shout out The Rock. Never mind, that's Scorpion, Scorpion King. King. I'm sorry, I don't know what I was. <laughs> I, I was. I got nothing. Never mind. I, mean, I don't watch any mummy no, movies. It's, it's in the Mummy. It is like the Mummy. Oh, it Scorpion is. Okay. King. Yeah. Yeah. The Rock. It's so it's first Scorpion. it appears. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was confusing myself. It's been Frazier, like ten years since I've probably seen that movie. Yeah, Brendan Fraser like appears or he fights like The Rock as this weird mummy pharaoh monster that is like a cgi scorpion that's awful so that's like like the first time he appears and then he has a standalone where it's like how he came to be the scorpion king or whatever and that movie is actually surprisingly way better than the brandon frazier one right on i'm with you bro i'm with you so yeah we obviously have two uh the rocks of the uh, the people's champ in WWE Wave One set, so definitely go check those out. Yeah, give next him some up, sort of like range, and then he's perfect. Give him put the him uh, in, sniper rifle. Put him in a dune buggy. Give I him don't know Black Lantern sniper rifle. Let's do just do that. Um, next up, demons slash devil. Uh, for Ooh. these, I put little Nikki. Yeah, it's Indian. That's a good old okay. uh, little Nikki. Is of course a uh, comedy, so it's not really like a horror movie. Um, not that these were supposed to be horror or anything, but um, Meet no. Joe Black. So it's Adam Sandler and Little Nicky. Meet Joe Black is not necessarily a demon or devil kind of thing, but it's Brad Pitt playing the embodiment of death. And it's just a very interesting film. And then my favorite has got to be like Hellraiser, the series of Hellraiser movies. They they increase and decline as like a roller coaster would in quality. But the first couple Hellraisers are pretty good as far as like weird demon stuff go. And then I didn't bother going with uh, any anime because there's a ton of like anime mm. stuff that fits into all of these. 
especially the witches, wizards, warlocks, and like stuff like that. But uh, Black Butler is a really good take on like the demon human interaction, in my opinion, for media sake. Oh, and then, uh, way to choose female anime number two for your choice, like the least manly <laughs> anime you could have chose there, Simeon. Oh, it's. <laughs> It's really Keep good. going. I'm not going to judge you that uh, hard. It's not. Yeah. It's like, like brawl. It's a pretty decent anime. Uh, like you could have said Blue Exorcist. You could have said Black Clover. You could have said a ton of stuff, man. I could have, but I went with Black Butler. You don't know. You've never watched this Sebastian probably, but you went with Black amazing. Butler. And, uh, Jeez, this guy. I not even bother with anything after Sebastian. Uh, so. Yikes. For Heroclix, Etrigan, of course. Gone, gone, the form of man, rise again, Etrigan. That's got to be like the number one demon in Heroclix. Uh, Blue Devil from, I think it's Justice League Trinity War, that Blue Devil last It is, yeah. In. And what an amazing figure to play around the holidays, or around the Halloween holiday, because uh, Blue Devil, of course, like has the whole uh, supernatural exorcism trait where. Uh, yeah, he deals like too unavoidable to anyone that would stop their dial from turning. And then he's also got Yeah, uh, that is cool. That is the cool. The ability to ignore mystics and like I don't know. He's just got a lot of stuff going for him. He's a little bit high costed nowadays, and DC always like starts their dial at a seventeen defense for whatever reason and no end on, but Blue Devil is always a welcome addition to the Justice League Dark team. Right on. For my demon movie, this comes no surprise. Uh, but Deadites are demons. They possess people. So I went with Evil Dead. It's my all time favorite. Evil Dead slash Army Darkness. So Army Darkness, they fight skeletons. We got your skeleton generics in the RIP uh, RIP set. Um, for like Arthur's troops, you could just do Templars for generic knights even though those are more range-based, sadly, and you definitely want knights that are more close comedy-based. We don't have any generic knights, though, besides the Templars. Uh, then you can also do generic demons from the Undead set. They're also demons, but they look goofy and stupid from the World's Finest set because they're based on Etrigan. Yeah. And then my choice for Ash, I think this is just a really good Ash dial, is uh, Archon. It kind of shows how the demons are screwing with him. Like when he's going crazy in Evil Dead 2 with the whole uh, utterly lost trait, which stuff. lets your opponent move him one yeah, space, yeah, yeah. which I think is hilarious. And then he starts strong with running shot. Let me just pull him up, actually. He just starts. Uh, it's it's a very much an Ash Williams style, I think. He has running shot for three clicks with his battle bolts, which is Pensai. And he uses it to target a single character and hits resolutions, deal each opposing character adjacent to the target one penetrating damage. So it's like better energy explosion. You know, in a way. So that's awesome. And then he goes into charge blades, combat reflexes. So he goes into chainsaw mode on the latter half of his dial. I think it is a perfect, and I do I do say this, perfect Ash Williams dial. The only thing I might change is maybe give him Indom. But honestly, there's points in Evil Dead where you're like, Ash isn't the most resolute character a lot of the time. So I can see him having no Indom is also fine. So I do think Archon is just like, the perfect ash dial for sure toughness running shot then goes charge blades combat reflexes with the really really good uh boomstick power i would say uh moving on next up is ghosts simeon spooky scary people in sheets three holes so ghosts. Like, ghosts aren't really my like forte i don't really care that much about ghosts uh i like reading about like so some actual books would be like odd thomas um there's a couple Stephen King books. Uh, the Poltergeist movie. I don't really care for ghosts. Uh, that's not like I find ghosts frightening. I just find most ways that ghosts are written are kind of underwhelming. And I just don't care for them. Uh, true ghost stories where it's like an actual account. Sometimes those are fun. Not like ghost hunters or ghost mm. facers or ghost yellers or any of like the reality ghost TV basers. ones. Those are all just complete garbage to me. But like recounting like a 17th century family that like like the Bell Witch Ghost, 
wherever, whenever that happened, like 1800s or 1900. No, it would have been 1800s because they had slaves because they were, they deserved the ghosts. Um, but anyhow, like yep, the bell, there, yeah. the bell witch family that totally deserved what they got. Uh, those are stories that I actually like. Um, the only ghost, what is it? Uh, the ghost, whatever trait, um, the only ghost figures realm? that all, yeah, the only figures that all play are the ones with like the ghost realm. And for some reason, death, the unique incarnate of death himself has the ghost realm trait when technically I don't believe, I think death would be more of like a deity or something, but, uh, I do like the death figure. Um, you've of course got the grim reaper. That's the alternate sculpt for him. And then there's ghost and Jacob Marley and ghost of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, I prefer death and Jacob Marley over the other two or the other three, whatever. Um, but yeah, there's not a lot of figures to really choose from with like when it comes to ghosts. There's just, I mean, you could go like Kitty Pride or something, but they're not like spooky. They're just like people that phase through things, basically. Right on. Uh, for ghosts, I'm in the same boat. I don't watch a lot of ghost anything related stuff. Uh, the only ghost thing I could think of was, of course, the ghost of uh, of of the present, past, and the future. So Christmas Carol is my go-to ghost movie, I guess. And I guess that makes Jacob Marley my go-to ghost hero clicks figure. <laughs> That's what I got. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Na 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 don't don't look at me like that. I don't care if it's October. What's this? What's I know. This? I, that's right. What's this? What's this? Um, in the you air. watch that movie at both times, baby. Watch the movie both times. Anyways, the yes. last, certainly not least. Well, for some people, they might think least uh, is zombies. Simeon. Oh, I for sure favorite think it's zombie. Least, to be honest, uh, zombies I know you are. Do. So there's a few zombie movies that I actually like. Uh, Twenty eight days later. Because they're like, it's like a biological, biological like thing. They're like rage induced zombies. It almost makes sense as to why they like eat people. Uh, Zombie Land, just because it's funny and it's fun and it's a decent movie. Um, and then Dawn of the Dead, and that includes like all the iterations of like Dawn of the Dead, uh, whatever they went on to be. Um, I don't care for the Resident Evil movies. The Resident Evil games are amazing, but honestly, like I oh, never really beautiful. felt like scared Works hard. playing them. Same with uh, Dead Space. Dead Space is cool until you. It's kind of scary until you get like a hang of like what each zombie does and like how they move, and then it just becomes like very repetitive. St- stops being scary at like certain points. Um, but we do have like Zuvembi. Uh, that can infect like figures and turn them other into other Zuvembis. We've got like the zombies from R.I.P. Um, yeah, that's about it. I don't care for the Walking Dead ones. I don't like dumb zombies that just like stand there and move slow. It's not frightening to me. I don't care for those. I also don't care for those, which is why I went with my favorite piece of zombie media is Marvel Zombies, specifically like the first two runs, and then anything with, of course, HGD, Howard the Duck, he's the man. Um, And obviously, we have zombies for that, so there's the Supernova Chases, Wolverine, Hulk, Spider-Man, Colonel America. Affordable ones, the Mutations and Monsters ones, which also is like a better Wolverine, depending on how you look at it. It's the only Galactus version of any of the zombies we have, which kind of sucks that that's the only one we get, but it's okay. We still also don't have a Luke Cage zombie made in Heroclix, which is really, really rough for like the main crew of zombies. And then, of course, you can get Spider-Man, Iron Man, uh, that Spider-Man is better than the Supernova Chase. Kind of don't waste your money on the Supernova Chase if you want Spider-Man. That uh, the Mutations of Monster one's better, and then of course Giant Man is the uncommon, easiest to get a hold of. And then there's the Guardians of the Galaxy set and Deadpool set zombies, and then the zombie team base. But yeah, Marvel Zombies is a really crazy good run. I remember just like hearing about it, and then I bought like a trade 
I think it was like the first five issues and I was like, oh, I love this. And then I bought like all the omnibuses for it. And I enjoy all pretty much all of the stories. The ones where like the zombies fight the apes is not good. It's just not enjoyable. And I do not care about it because I don't care about the super apes. Um, but like the overall normal story, how they explain the zombies and how it's like an infinite time loop type of deal. So, spoilers for Marvel zombies, sort of not really. Uh, it's just really interesting. The what they do with the Ultimate Fantastic Four is also really cool. So I, I enjoy all those. I liked the I especially like the one shot Kitty Pride zombie story they did. I loved that story. That was a great one. Um, so yeah, there's lots of good Marvel zombies comics out there. Uh, I can't speak to a lot of the recent ones. I read some of the Secret Wars Battle World stuff, but that was less about the zombies and more about just people surviving in their world. It wasn't about the zombies being a main character. That's all right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Marvel Zombies is my go-to zombies, for sure. It was just they followed like, like Elsa Bloodstone, and, like a few other people. Or, yeah, people that had yeah. Like, that's basically it. Yeah. But yeah, that is that is the end of Malcolm's questions this week. Thank you, Malcolm, so much for sending in those questions. Uh, if you guys want to send in questions like Malcolm, you can write into our Facebook or our Twitter. We also have a Gmail account. So you want to send us an email, like Will Smith did last week. So that's at Gmail. Sorry, goodness gracious. Dial H for Hero Clicks, uh, all spelt out at gmail.com. You can also listen to this podcast anywhere. Recommend it to your friends. Obviously, we're on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, pretty much wherever podcasts are found. And if you're listening on one of those random wacky apps that's not super well known, we're pretty much going to show up there too. So uh, recommend Dial H for everybody, anyone in your friends group, anyone in your play group that you think might enjoy some fun Hero Clicks content. And uh, check out our YouTube channel for weekly. Uh, we're going to start doing Thursday Throwdown every week now, guys. On Thursday, we took that break to hype up the Dial H for Hero Clicks Extreme Rules WWE video. And of course, go check that out. There's a playlist to watch all of the, the trailer and then all the promos. And then, of course, you it's this beautiful wrestling storytelling buildup that we made for this video. And we're, we're really proud of it. We can't wait for Wave 2 to do another one. So check that out on our YouTube channel, guys. That is all I have to say. Simeon? Yeah. I want to say that the uh, the Extreme Rules YouTube video truly made me laugh until I cried several times. Um, it's not all gold. There's, like, some several, like, parts of it that are just, you know, you just have to watch it to get through it. But there's some real, some real golden nuggets in there that are just funny to me. And uh, I hope they're funny to you, too. And again, if you join our Patreon, uh, not only will you get bloopers from the our Hero Clicks match with the Extreme Rules, you'll get those bloopers as a video. We're also going to start putting up some of the bloopers from our normal podcast, which isn't a lot, to be honest. We don't screw up that much. Uh, I know it sounds. We like don't. We We're would. just so perfect. Yeah, it sounds like we would, but honestly, we keep most of the screw ups in. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll put up like pre-show banter and some other stuff if anyone wants to listen. Of course, like if you're being a patron, I wouldn't suggest you be a patron just to listen to that. But you know, it is a perk of becoming a patron. And with that, make sure to check out CoolStuffInc.com where you can find oh. cool stuff in stock every day from the latest HeroClick singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Right. And as always, there's only one King of the Werewolves. And that's Cap Wolf. Oh! Happy Halloween, guys. <laughs> Mutt, 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 mutt